Now this is the piège de résistance of Randy Stedman coming up. And I, you know, I, I've never appreciated Randy Stedman. I don't know, for some reason I never really understood the man, but today I do. And that's because of this next clip, okay? I, I, I don't really watch the board meetings anymore because I can't stand them, okay? I don't want to hear how much money they're, you know, handing out millions. Oh, here, take your million. Here, take your two million. Here, take your, you know, they're just handing out millions and millions and millions. And, you know, I can't take it anymore, you know, because it, I, to me it's an it's a, a, a front. But this particular board meeting has been very interesting so far. So, here we're going to have Randy. This is classic, and I'll go through it. Randy's going to talk about the block sign-up controversy, and this is really classic union buster shit here. You got this is great. Listen to this. Um, I think what precipitated this this issue, t uh, the, the attendance today, was uh, a, dis a dispute about the packaging program, and to some extent. I think we feel like in the middle of uh, internal union politics. Okay, you can already see where he's going with this. Okay, this has got nothing to do, it's got to do with Shirley versus Bruce. Okay, they're asserting themselves in here. They're, they're saying, we're part of that whole thing, you know. And so he's trying to use this re-election as some kind of a tool for, their, for TriMet to be off the hook for something, but anyway, he's saying that we're in the middle of some kind of dispute. That's completely false, okay, but let's keep listening. This uh, packaging program was a follow-on from the hours of service agreement. Uh, the packaging program uh, created a situation where union employee operators, uh, in particular, could have a four-day four day work week, and as a result of that, we dramatically reduced the number of split shifts, both on weekdays and weekends. Okay, so he's already showing how great their idea was, okay. We created a situation where there's less split shifts, and it was a great idea, and we're doing a great job, and so he's, he's, he's already no longer objective in his argument. He's already talking about how great TriMet is, right, right here. It's right at the beginning of this he's talking about how progressive and great they are. So it was a quality of life uh, issue. This uh, was negotiated by former President Hansen and a mem uh, committee of uh, four uh, from the ATU side and uh, TriMet side. Uh, it took over a year to negotiate. So that's factual from what I understand. And remember, I'm not, I'm not fluent in current events at TriMet because I'm no longer part of the loop. I can observe from social media and videos like this. But from what I understand, that's, that's correct. This is a creation of Bruce's along with whoever, him or Shelly or somebody. The only ones that came up with this block sign-up, which came out of the hours of service sign-up. And the hours of service, you know, they everybody freaked out, and Joe Rose wrote this headline, oh, my God, try and operators working 60 hours a week, and, and sometimes they go on back-to-back -back shifts and uh, create a certain hysteria. The... Nobody ever mentioned except the counterculture media, me and a few other people, Tom Horton, other Dan Christensen, that uh, there was no statistics to prove that working all those hours was any more dangerous than just a regular shift. There, never, there was never any actual conclusive evidence that doing uh, what was the turnbacks, the words turnbacks, that there was no evidence that doing a turn back was any more hazardous to anybody than any other shift. But of course, mainstream media pumped this as some kind of a problem, and you know the rest is history. And uh, was finalized in August of 2014. Um, uh, President Block, even before she took office, filed a ULP against President Hansen with Herb on this issue, which Herb immediately dismissed. That was... I believe there it was dismissed. They quoted some... I, if I remember correctly, it was not submitted in the proper format, and so they threw it out because it wasn't submitted in the correct format. I'm not sure what happened to that. Um, but, yes, she did do that, 
And there were a significant amount of TriMet operators that were very much against the block sign up. And he'll talk about why in a minute here. In March uh, to June of 2015, President Block then took office on July 1st, and in her first week in office, sent a letter uh, demanding that the packaging program that had been put in place for a, a, a trial period of a year be immediately uh, rescinded. Okay, that is a very crucial point of information. The day she took over, she notified TriMet that they didn't want to continue the block sign up, okay? And uh, that was one year. So she took office in July and she notified them in July that she wanted to end the block sign up for July. All right, now let's keep going. Uh, at, uh, at the end of the summer program. But the parties, when they negotiated this agreement, were concerned about giving it a chance to work because it did represent a change from the cafeteria style sign up. So they put in a provision that nobody, either party could cancel the agreement, but could only cancel it following the trial period for the year. So even according to Stedman there, you could the ATU president could cancel the program for the following year. And remember, she can't. She notified them in July that she wanted to end it in July. So, so it, it's all following simply. But just keep listening. Uh, Shelley Block took office months before the end of that period. Uh, so our position is that that was not effective notice, and specifically contrary to the terms of the MOA. But even if it was notice. Uh, the following fall, uh, toward the end of that trial period, there was labor management meetings that resulted in extending that, uh, that pilot program for the fall and into the winter and actually into the spring. Now, I don't know if you're following him, but he, as you can see, he's taking you down the rabbit hole here. Okay, he's doing what they do. It's very masterful. I mean, I've never really appreciated Randy until now. He's, taking, he's saying that they met again in September and they extended the agreement, but I don't see how that's possible if Shirley notified them in July that she didn't want to continue the agreement. It just gets better and better. Let's continue uh, listening. So um, there were improvements made, as the MOA specifically uh, allowed for, to make it more uh, of interest to a greater number of union members. <laughs> Do you see the rabbit hole you're in here? Do you see the rabbit hole he's got you going down? <laughs> There's improvements made that would make it even more better for more union membership. He's got you going down the rabbit hole. It's brilliant. I mean, the, it's a brilliant presentation by Randy Stedman. But there was uh, an extension, a conscious extension of that beyond the pilot period into spring. W and there was also an agreement at that November 2nd, uh, 2015 meeting to have a February 1st uh, follow-up meeting so that they could talk about extending the uh, pilot program for the summer of 2016. That so he's saying, he, he's saying as late as November 15th, him and Shirley or John are talking about extending this program uh, for who knows how long, but he, he's actually saying they had, had a meeting in November to extend the program. And I, re, I don't remember Shirley ever saying anything about extending the program. All I ever remember is Shirley saying, we're going to end this program. So here you go down this rabbit hole, and he's, he's kind of, I mean, he's, where is he coming up with this? Is it off the top of his head, I wonder? Where is he coming up with this stuff? You have to, you have to marvel at people that can do this meeting was scheduled for February 1st because it takes about seven or eight weeks to do what we do, uh, run cut and create the blocks for the schedules. <laughs> See, now he's, now he's talking about February 1st and it takes seven or eight weeks to do the run cut. I, even though it's just masterful rabbit hole stuff here. Once he gets you looped into his, his nonsense, he, he just keeps spinning this yarn. And, and his, his spin, if you don't really stop like what I'm doing here and, and listen to what he's saying, I can see how easy it would be to fall in a rabbit hole with him. It's a very complex, time-consuming process, and they has historically taken seven to eight weeks, and we always communicate that, uh, the results of that scheduling to the ATU two weeks before the sign-up, which for summer was April 4th. 
Now, you know as well as I know that all of this run cut shit is done by a computer, so they can spit it out in probably 10 minutes notice. So here he is spitting this to take seven, eight weeks, and we notified him two weeks. I mean, we know that it's computerized. And it takes no time, you know, use a computer, boom, done. So he's spinning this wild yarn about how long it takes to do things. And he's roped in all the directors, you know, because they don't know any better. Don't forget, these board of directors, they don't know anything about TriMet, okay? They're not like me or, or even, they're not like any of us that are actually paying attention. They come in once a month, and they listen to Neil, and they give him what he wants. But, but Randy's got them all roped into this wild theory he's got here. Let's keep, let's keep listening. So it was due to be completed in March. Um, on January 29th, uh, one business day, less than actually one business day before the February 1st scheduled meeting. Are you appreciating this as much? On, fe on February 29th, one, one business day scheduled before the next, the next business meeting. I mean, this stuff is masterful stuff. He, those board members don't have any idea what he's talking about because I don't have any idea what he's talking about. The ATU sent an email to Shelley Lomax and canceled the meeting to talk about extending the uh, pilot program for summer, but gave no other indication of their uh, canceling the program or wanting to cancel the program. Okay, folks, there, there's your definitive proof that Stedman is a lying piece of shit, because he already told the board that in last July, Shirley Block notified TriMet that they wanted a cat cancel the program. And here he is now talking about an update in February where they didn't tell him that they wanted to cancel the program. Gee, he's, got, he's, he's got all mumbled up, but if you're following it a little piece by piece, you see that he's a lying piece. He's lying. He already told them that they canceled it in July, but just now he told them they didn't cancel it for uh, February. Then, a few days later, um, on February 10th, the ATU sent to its members uh, notice that while they had agreed to extend the packaging pilot th through spring, it was ending in summer. Um, they did not copy TriMet on that uh, letter. Uh, <laughs> all right. He got surely they did not CC Randy that, they were, that this had ended. He surely already told them that this ended in July. He told, he, Stedman was well aware this was over in July because she told him in July. But now he's saying, okay, after Shirley sent the, the letter out that this program is ending in July, they didn't send me a copy of that saying that. So, I mean, this, this guy's just, one lie is, is coming on top of each other. And if you understand, if you're pay actually paying attention like I do, you, you see exactly what's going on here. Lucky for TriMet, nobody is paying attention but me. And lucky for TriMet that I have no constituency because what I think has no has no relevance to anything that's going to happen because they know, oh, so what, I know 100 people have watched it. What do they care? They don't. And we did not receive any other oral or written notification of their intent to terminate the contract. There you, there's another lie. I'm going to call out every lie that he says because in the beginning of the video, if you don't believe me, go back and listen to the beginning. In the beginning of the video, he admitted that Shirley told him in July they were ending it. Now he's saying that they didn't tell him. See, he, we caught you. You're caught. You're busted. You're a lying piece of shit. We know it. <laughs> and you're lucky that I'm not mainstream media. You're lucky I can't do anything about it. But we know you're a fucking liar, Randy. Or terminate the MOA. Um, the, the ATU then waited an entire month to send exactly the same letter to Neil McFarland. So uh, I, we believe that that was intentional because by March 10th or 11th, that would be the time that run cuts were finalized and too late to make any changes uh, to the pilot program for summer 2016. Um, and the sole basis uh, for their wanting to can cancel was that the membership didn't vote on the MOA. Well, we have a long history uh, in TriMet of midterm agreements with the, ATU, with the ATUs that are signed by the president or maybe the president and the bargaining team, but not uh, by the entire uh, membership. And in fact, this issue was litigated in the context of meals and breaks in 2005 with a decision in 2008 by Herb that unless there's some prior notice to TriMet, 
that they are going to require a membership of the uh, vote of the membership. A vote of the membership is not required to enforce midterm agreements. You know, he's massively throwing in a whole bunch of fluff here. He, he's just going, yeah, it's true. The, the president of the union can make an agreement and you're stuck with it whether you like it or not. It's true. You can't argue with that. But that was when, the, you know, it's not it's not applicable to now. It was applicable to then. Okay, he's trying to use this as some kind of a, a wedge issue. So we were concerned about uh, that issue as well. So having said that, it is true that either party can cancel this MOA, but our position is we have not been given effective notice of that until perhaps this uh, March 10th letter. Okay, so here he is again saying, trying to say that they didn't get notice until March 10th when he's already admitted at the very beginning of this video that he got notice in July. I mean, he's caught red-handed, okay, he's lying. and. We use his own words to, to prove that. So we know that he's lying, but once again, so what? We can't stop him from lying. There's nothing we can do about Randy Stedman, unfortunately. And it's too late uh, to, to cancel it. The ATU interpreted our position as refusing to cancel the uh, pilot program, which is not our position, but there are significant ramifications. Uh, to canceling that program, which uh, was negotiated by the parties to improve, improve the quality of life. And some of those consequences are that weekday full-time split shifts would increase from 32 under the pilot program to over 110. So, so that's more or less a threat there. You know, if you don't approve our plan, you're going to have 110 split shifts, and right now you have 32. That that's that's like holding a gun to their head, okay? If you don't do what we say, we're gonna give you 110 split shifts, okay? Just, you know, this is just I, I don't know how I don't know why people put up with this. I don't I don't know why you people have any loyalty to this company at all. You know, if you, if you just look a little bit, you see that you are nothing to them, and uh, you know, a, a spare tire has more value than you do. Saturday full-time split shifts would increase from zero uh, that we've achieved under this pilot program to 40. And Sunday full-time split shifts would increase from one to over 30. Um, the weekday full-time st uh, straight duties that end by 430 would decrease from 236 to about 170. And full-time operators with weekends off would decrease from 270 to about 200, mm -hmm. uh, not including the extra board. So those significant consequences uh right if you don't do things our way your members will suffer and this has been the pattern all the way if you don't do it our way we're going to take it out on the members that's the trimet way wake up people if they don't get their way they're going to take it out on the members that's that's the bottom line and we're hesitant uh, uh, to cancel a program without following the terms of the agreement that we entered into with the former administration because it is frankly harmful to the members and we know that there is an election uh, that is pending for officers. And then you have the the smoking gun. TriMet is fucking with the union right now in an attempt to uh, sway the election to Bruce. You just said it. We know there's an election. We want Bruce. And we're going to fuck with them unless we get Bruce. He, he just admitted it. I mean, there you go. I mean, what else do you need to see? He just said that we're doing this because we might be able to get Bruce back. Do you think that's a good idea to get Bruce back? When you have Stedman making a play for Bruce here, right in public. And so you, you think that's a good idea? I mean, I'll go with whatever the union members decide this time. I'm not going to... You think Bruce is better than okay, but they want Bruce. TriMet management wants Bruce. Do you really want somebody representing you that you know is the favorite of TriMet management? I don't think so, but what the hell do I know? A president and vice president, and who knows what will be the president uh, after that election. So we know that the former administration and his team bargained this uh, MOA into an existence. And uh, so we think it's fair to insist upon the terms of that agreement. So those are some of the issues that precipitated the attendance today and some of the mm. items that I heard uh, this morning. 
So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, a very masterful display from our buddy Randy, who weaved and wobbed, and he, you know, he's, he, he's all over the place. I mean, you can't even follow his conversation. He's so good at moving it all around. I mean, look at, I don't know, I mean, this is over 15 minutes here for, for his uh, presentation, and that's the point. For, his point is to make sure the board members are not really clear about what's going on. He's done that very well. Well, that's all, folks. That's my line. Simplified, babe. Let a star do this. That's all, folks. That's all, folks. Can I go home now?